Hello students. Today we will see what is deadlock. Before that, uh, let us uh, go through or just see the system model uh, which we are assuming uh, for this concept of deadlock. So the system model first. Uh, the system model it consists of resource types. Let us say R1, R2, R3 up to Rm. So, what are the resource types and the what what are resource instances? Very important. Again, I repeat, uh, you should be very clear with the terminology, resource type and the resource instance. So, I will explain with the help of very simple example. Uh, suppose, uh, let us say uh, resource types. So, what do you mean by resources rather? When I say memory space, CPU cycles, files, IO devices like printers, tape drives, etc. So, I am calling it as a resources. I am calling them as resources. So, in our terminology, all these are called as or rather all these resources are called as resource types. Again, I repeat the memory space, CPU cycles, files, IO devices like printer, tape drives, etc. are called as resource types. Means the categories in which the system resources, they are categorized. So, what now what is, what do you mean by resource instances? Let us go ahead. So, if I say uh, there are two printers in my system, there are two tape drives in my system, there are I am utilizing, my system is utilizing suppose two CPU cycles, two files, five files are there like this. So, these numbers are nothing but the instances of that particular resource type. I repeat. So, suppose five printers, I say five printers are there in the system means that there are five instances of the resource type printer. Let us again uh, do it for some another resource type. Let us say files. File, I am calling it as a resource type. So, suppose there are 10 files in the system. I am calling, I will say that there are 10 instances of the resource type file. I hope the uh, difference between the resource type and resource instance is clear. So, let us go ahead to the deadlock concept. So, what is deadlock? So, definition of deadlock. A set of blocked processes, each holding a resource, a set of blocked processes, each holding a resource and waiting to acquire a resource held by another process in the set. So, the whole, the processes, the, the processes in the set, they are in a deadlock state. I will repeat the definition, very important definition. A set of blocked processes, each holding a resource and waiting to acquire a resource held by another process in the set. If in this scenario, the all the processes or rather all the blocked processes in the set, they are said to be in a deadlock condition. So, neither process proceeds and continues. All processes in the set, they are blocked. This is called as deadlock situation. So, why they are blocked? The definition itself says that why they are blocked? Because each process in the set, it is holding a resource and again it is waiting to acquire another resource which is held by another process in the set. So, it continues in a loop and no process, not a single process in the set gets the all the required resources and completes the work assigned to it. In simple English, this is the definition of the deadlock. So, deadlock 
what is the scenario or it is a the set of processes they are in a chain and they are called as they are in a deadlock state so deadlock it is a scenario so it in, includes the a set of blocked processes a set of blocked processes they are said to be in a deadlock state or deadlock situation so this is your definition of deadlock let us i will just go to the next step i will explain this with a very very simple example so you will understand it better so yeah consider here so the example suppose so system it is having two tape drives assumption i am explaining you the deadlock next level with simple example definition i hope it is clear so system assumption for that or the example assume that the system it is having two tape drives system it is having only two tape drives there only two tape drives are there in the system so what what this statement means just now we had seen what we had seen just now resource type and resource instance so i repeat our assumption is that the system has only two tape drives so on the top of that i can say that the system is having the resource type only resource type or only resource only resource type that is tape drive and the system is having the two instances or the two resource instances of that resource type tape drive so this statement is it clear i hope it is clear so now next assumption to explain the scenario of deadlock p0 and p1 are the only two processes we are assuming they are present in the system p0 and p1 only two processes they are present in the system again i repeat the scenario we are assuming the system model that only one resource type tape drive it is there in the system having the two resource instances this is your first statement system has two tape drives next assumption is the system it is having currently only the two processes one process named p0 and one process named p1 next assumption or next scenario it is that it says that p0 and p1 each hold one tape drive and each needs another one i will elaborate on this so i am calling the tape drives though it is not shown here as t0 and t1 please cooperate with it i am calling the process as p0 and p1 i am calling the tape drives as t0 and t1 so the second statement or this uh, just focus on this p0 and p1 each hold one tape drive and each needs another one so i will elaborate p0 is it is holding tape drive t0 P1 is holding the tape drive T1, is it? So P0 and P1 each hold one tape drive. Go next, and what is the scenario? And each needs another one. So I will elaborate in, on the next statement. P0 is having T0, P1 is having T1. It is having, it is holding, and to complete its task, P0 needs. t1 which is held which is held by p1 and vice versa on the similar lines p1 it is holding t1 but to complete its task it needs the t0 tape drive held by p0 so again just see both the processes are blocked just go to the definition a set of blocked processes each holding a resource and waiting to acquire a resource held by another process in the set so p0 and p1 they are blocked neither p0 nor p1 completes so this is a p now i can conclude that p0 and p1 are in a deadlock state here the set set of processes in the set only two processes p0 and p1 we are assuming so obviously you scale it to the multi processing let it be 100 processes or thousands 
thousand processes in the set. So this in illustrates the your deadlock situation with this simple example. I hope you understand understood. So from this example, it doesn't mean that, or you don't be in the illusion that the deadlock can happen with the same resource type. I will elaborate. So what is the next scenario? In this scenario, we are assuming that only one resource type, type drive, it is in the system. Suppose I assume that there is one more resource type that is printer in the system, uh, your system model. So just please listen. Again, P0 and P1, uh, two processes we are assuming in the system. So instead of this first statement, I am assuming that there is one tape drive and one printer in the system. So again map it or again uh, compare it with the resource type and resource instance. So second example I am giving you to illustrate the deadlock situation with two different resource types. So which different resource types I am dealing here with is one is printer, one is tape drive. Again P0 assume that P0 is holding that tape drive T0 and P1 is holding the I am calling P0 it is holding the tape drive T uh, tape drive uh, Tx and P1 is holding the printer Px. So and again they go next uh, each hold one instance of that particular resource type and each needs another one. So how I will call it as P0 it is holding Tx, P1 is holding printer Px, P0 wants needs the printer Px to complete its tasks. Similarly, P1 needs T0, Tx, sorry, tape drive to complete its task. But the tape drive and the printer, again it is held by the next process. I will repeat. P0 and P1, both the processes we are assuming. Instead of same resource in resource type, I am assuming there are there is one printer, one tape drive and one printer in the system. I am calling tape drive as Tx. I am calling printer as Px. So the next assumption or next in the scenario is P0 it is holding the tape drive Tx. P1 is holding the printer Px. Now next P0 holding uh, tape drive Tx and it needs printer Px which is held by P1 to complete its task. Similarly, next in the scenario, P1 is holding the printer Px and it needs, P1 needs the tape drive Tx which is held by P0 to complete its task. So, neither P0 nor P1 can complete their tasks. So, P0 and P1 are blocked on the event, are blocked on the event, very important word event, event is release of the resource. So, P0 and P1 are blocked on the re event, event is released, release, to release a resource, to release a printer, to release a tape drive. So, again, I will go to the very precise definition of the deadlock. So, I will just speak out for you. Please listen. Yeah, before that, I conclude that or I can say that the deadlock can happen with a set of processes with the similar resource types or different resource types. We have seen two distinct examples. So, now let listen the exact precise definition of the deadlock. A set of processes is in a deadlock state when every process in the set is waiting for an event that can be caused only by another process in the set. I will repeat the definition. A set of processes is in a deadlock state when every process in the set is waiting for an event that can be caused only by another process in the set. 
द व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट वर्ड ऑर द टर्मिनॉलॉजी इन दिस डेडलॉक डेफिनेशन इज द इव्हेंट सो इन अवर केस जस्ट नाउ वी हॅड सीन टू केसेस व्हॉट इज द इव्हेंट इव्हेंट आय कॅन डिफाईन इन दिस एक्झाम्पल ॲज रिसोर्स ॲक्विजिशन अँड रिसोर्स रिलीज सो अक्वायरिंग ऑफ द रिसोर्स अँड रिलीजिंग द रिसोर्स आय एम कॉलिंग इट ॲज अ इव्हेंट सो होल्डिंग that is acquiring holding the tape drive holding the printer it is event similarly releasing the printer releasing the tape drive or releasing the resource it is event and as the definition says that event it is caused by which by whom so event it is caused by only by another process in the set so unless and until the process which are blocked they will uh, release that resource the no neither a single process in that set will continue since this is nothing but you are the deadlock scenario so this is the introduction of the deadlock next so again we will see uh, the four necessary conditions of the deadlock first is mutual exclusion next is hold and wait third is no preemption and last is circular wait so let us go ahead with the conditions one by one so mutual exclusion only one process at a time can use a resource only one process at a time can use a resource that is nothing but mutual exclusion so it needs this explanation each process utilizes a resource as follows request use and release this sequence is very important it i will explain you the mutual what is mutual exclusion request use and release so suppose i will give you a very simple example to illustrate mutual exclusion so the resource here i am uh, a process wants to use it is a suppose a read write file the resource i am calling or the resource type it is a read write file so the process n number of processes are coming and going through the system throughout the system so it we are dealing with multi processing environment so what is this so each process suppose a process p0 wants to use that read write file process the work assigned to that process p0 it is to update that read write file i am calling that file read write file as a resource so the process p0 must first request that resource or acquire that resource then the process should use that resource use means what the process should do the modification read write operation on that file as per the task given to that process or work given to that process and after modifying that file the process p0 should release that resource that read write file it should release so that that resource file read write file can be used by another n number of processes which need to update that file so this sequence so means what you should this is your nothing but the mutual exclusion exclusive access to that resource exclusive access mutual exclusion exclusive access to that resource so only one process at a time can use that resource so this is the first uh, necessary condition for the deadlock mutual exclusion so a question should come into your mind read write file so same scenario if the resource is read only file instead of read write file so it's the scenario is same scenario resource is file but it instead of read write file it is a read only file again 100 processes they are they are competing or they want to use that read only file use means what read only file is read only resource that resource read only file 100 processes want to read that file read only it is a read only so it is this sequence necessary request use and release just see it is read only file 
so no need to acquire that resource use and release it's a self explanatory because the file is read only it doesn't matter so whether 100 processes are reading that file 1000 processes are reading that file so no need to file, use this sequence what is the sequence request use and release so no need to use the mutual exclusion mutual or exclusive access to that read only file why because it is a shareable resource read only file it is a shareable resource whereas read write file it is a non shareable resource just see what will happen if you don't follow if any process doesn't follow this sequence so n number of processes will modify that read write file and the file data will be in inconsistent state which will not the case in the read only file so we always remember all is very important the first condition mutual exclusion so it says that only one process at a time can use the resource but that resource it is not applicable to the shareable resource just now i have i have explained you let us go ahead next condition to, to necessary condition for the deadlock is hold and wait simply it maps to the definition of the deadlock two times or two definitions we had seen so hold and wait it maps to your definition next is no preemption a resource can be released only voluntary by the process holding it after that process has completed its task so you are not allowed to preempt the resource and circular wait again it uh, goes hand in hand with the hold and wait so there exists a chain of processes again it straight away maps to the definitions so that's it for today